Okay guys, uh, today I'm just taking a quick look at this new GarageBand 10.2 update. Um, this is the splash screen after you've installed the update. Uh, new modern design. GarageBand gets an updated look and improved ease of use. There's some touch bar, additional touch bar features. That doesn't apply to me, I'm not using one of the new MacBook Pros. Uh, there's three new drummers, there's some extra percussion, uh, drummer loops, um, and you've got share to GarageBand for iOS, which again doesn't reflect me. Remotely add new tracks to your project using GarageBand on your iPhone or iPad, blah, blah, blah. So let's take a quick look. Okay, here's the new GarageBand 10.2. Let me just turn the automation off. It's loaded the last thing I was working on, this little um, this little project which I was using for a tutorial of some type. Now, the first thing you notice is it's got this new flat look, more like logic, um, but this quick help button is switched on. You can't help but notice it because everything you mouse over, a little yellow post-it note pops up giving a description of whatever you're mousing over. Now, I don't remember if this quick help was in the previous version of GarageBand. Assuming it wasn't, otherwise why would this be switched on drawing your attention to it? So if I'm wrong, and this was in the previous version, I'm sorry, but I think it's a new version, I don't remember it being there before, we now have this quick help, the same as in Logic, and it's brilliant. You just switch it on, and then anything that you mouse over, any button, any area of the workspace, any transport, any LCD, any of these icons, anything, regions, the ruler area, the work area, Anything you mouse over, a little post-it note pops up giving you a brief description of what it is that you're mousing over and what it does. Now I'm mousing over the track header area, so I get a brief description popping up telling me that's the track header and what it does. But if I then do command forward slash, it opens the manual at exactly the right place to give me a proper full manual description of whatever it was I was mousing over. So that's brilliant. We've got that now. But if it was there before, I apologise. I never saw it. Oh, no, I don't remember it. Okay, now, all the other stuff that's new, um, you, you once you've installed uh, the update to 10.2, before any of it works, you've got to go to the GarageBand main menu here, to the sound library, and content, and download all additional content and all additional sound library content, right? All outstanding content that needs to be installed must be installed for these new features to work. Right, so get all the updates and, and content, everything downloaded and installed. When that finally finishes, your um, Apple Loops will be re-indexed re automatically. Right, So get all that done, and then we can get into these new features. So let me just shorten all of these regions like that. And then let me create a new instrument track. Notice that we have these new flat icons now for selecting the type of track you're creating. I'm going to create an instrument track. Okay, let's turn the smart controls off. And then let's pencil in an empty MIDI region. Drag it out. Okay, let's double click and go into Piano Edit. Now this doesn't appear to have changed at all. This hasn't had an update. It's just got a, is it slightly different, flatter look? Okay, well, but it hasn't changed really. Let's pencil in some content. How to write 60s science fiction music. <laughs> okay, um, now let's look at one new feature. Zoom in a bit. Look at the edge of all the regions, right? First of all, behind drummer regions, if you mouse behind a drummer region, a little yellow plus appears, making it very easy to bang, quickly add a new drummer region tacked onto the end of the previous one, right? But at the end of regions, we now have these clear icons when you mouse over a loop icon at the top and a drag in or out icon at the bottom easily showing you that if you grab the region at the top area part of it here you're dragging in or um, you're dragging out additional um, alias loops that's the same for drummer regions audio regions and midi regions but if you mouse over and grab the bottom part of the edge of the region then you're grabbing the icon that says you're dragging the region border in or out and that's what it does, drags the region border in or out. And, but we now have this feature that was that is in Logic, where when you drag the edge of a region in or out, a little kind of semi-transparent ghost copy of the region appears underneath, showing you all the possible content 
that region contains originally from which you are dragging a selection. Same for audio. That's all the possible audio in that region from which I'm dragging a selection. And same with the drummer track, if I drag that direction where there is some content. It shows me the content I'm, dr I'm dragging a selection from. And, it, and then at the front of regions, because you can't drag loops out, there's no loop icon, just the drag in or out. To, to drag the front in or out. And again, you see possible content underneath as a kind of semi-transparent copy, a ghost copy letting you know that there is content there from which you're making a selection. Okay, we got that. That's that's very nice. Okay. Now the next thing, um, piano roll hasn't changed. Smart controls they haven't changed. They don't appear to have changed at all. Next thing is we got new drummers, right? Three new drummers, and what's different now is not only that we got three new drummers, but if we open the drummer editor. There's the drummer editor as usual, but to the left of the drummer editor, we no longer have the panel for changing and selecting a new drummer. That's now moved up to the library. Look, here's your drummers. Choose a category. There's the drummers. There's the drummers. There's the drummers. Right, and we have three new drummers in this category called in this category called percussion. Isabella does Latin. Quincy does pop. Finn does songwriter percussion, and they're absolutely brilliant. Absolutely bloody fantastic. So. Isabella. She does Latin percussion. Let's just mute all this stuff. Here's the editor as usual. Oh, this is different drums to choose from. Choose the pattern for each layer. Make the pattern louder, quieter, busier, simpler, etc. And here's the drummer presets on the edge of the editor as usual. And the sound quality is superb. It really is. OK, so that's Isabella does, does Latin. Quincy does pop percussion. Slightly different selection of uh, percussion instruments. Oop, let's put a loop around that. And Finn, songwriter percussion, and he has a cajon and a foot stomp, and this good type shaker and a, a sleigh bells, etc. But the foot stomp and the um, the cajon, cajon drum, sound fantastic with that deep thump they give, and you can clearly hear immediately that. But the this this. These percussion sounds will sound fantastic for doing contemporary R&B and any pop crossover R&B. These really deep drums give a fantastic sound that you can mix in with other drums for doing R&B style. Or hip hop patterns and that, right? Okay, now you should be able to choose a drummer like I've got Finn playing a pattern at the moment and then I should be able to switch to any of the other percussion kits here. Like I should be able to switch to the Latin kit and Finn should play the Latin kit, but it doesn't work. He's still playing the same sound, so that's broken. You should be able to switch the percussion drummer to play any of the three percussion kits. There's one for each of the drummers, but that doesn't work. But there's your new percussionist drummers, and they're absolutely brilliant. And another bonus of this system is that we can now have more than one drummer. Hallelujah! I can create another drummer track, yay, like that. And so I can have a drummer, a regular drummer here. Let's have um, an R&B drummer like Rose. And you can mix that with a percussionist. Let's switch this to Curtis. And you can have another drummer, <laughs> another third drummer, and I can mix and match two different percussionists. Let's have some Finn in there, but not so busy. We've got Isabella doing Latin percussion, we've got Finn doing the coffee shop percussion, the songwriter percussion, and we've got the basic drummer working with all that, and Curtis doing this neo soul thing. Yeah, so multiple drummers, three new percussionists, absolutely brilliant. Now another thing we can do, which is this is really good, 
is um let's mute these here's this bit of guitar track i was working with on this song now normally to get drums to go with with something that's that's some patterns that you've got going already you'd have to load up a drummer track and then load a drummer onto it and then go through their presets on the panel here and then switch to a different drummer and go through their presets but now we've got drummer loops in the library which adds more loops um, like for example here's Curtis here's his presets but there are now drummer loops living in the loop library and we get additional loops for each drummer as well as a copy of the ones that are on the preset panel for each drummer um, and we get um, drummer loops in the library also for the new percussionist so drummer loops now live in the library and this is really clever because if I get rid of this pattern on Curtis's kit let's just get rid of it there's no drummer now just this guitar um, which let's say I, I did the guitar to a basic drum beat before or to a click or something and now what I do is I just go to the loop library switch to um, drummer there's a new category of loops called drummer and these are all drummer loops for all the drummers including the percussionists and now when I hit play if I just touch and activate any of these drummer patterns it will begin playing in time with the music and not only will it, will it play the pattern I've chosen but each pattern plays the correct drum kit for the drummer's pattern that I've chosen So let's say I go, well, I like this pattern by Gavin. I just drag it onto the track and it switches the drummer on that track to Gavin. So that Gavin is the right drummer playing the pattern because I chose a Gavin pattern. It switches the drummer automatically. I'm ready to go. Yeah, brilliant, oh, absolutely fantastic. Now another thing you do is you can drag and drop these drummer patterns into the library to make your own. Let's say I've got this, um, let's, let's audition a different pattern. Okay, I want to go with Benny Mayfield. It's Benny the drummer, Mayfield's the pattern. I've auditioned while it's playing by clicking and listening, and I, this is the one I want. I drag it onto the track, it switches the drummer to Benny to, to match the pattern, and now I can open it in the editor and I can tweak it if I want. Now notice I dragged a pattern from the library called Mayfield, which is also a pattern that's in Benny uh, um, Benny's um, presets here. If I were to drag because there are some additional patterns for each drummer. So look at the Benny patterns here. Some of them are the same as the ones in the presets here with Benny now loaded as a drummer. Here's his presets. Here's his presets in the library, but notice there are many, many more, right? So there is a Benny pattern now called Verse, which is not in his library of patterns here. So if I were to choose that pattern instead, Benny Verse, and drag that onto the track, switches the, pattern, uh, the, the drummer to Benny to match the pattern, and now at the bottom of the preset list in the editor, we see a new pattern has appeared called custom because this pattern I've dragged from the library for Benny is not in his preset list on the editor. And now I can tweak it. So I've taken the swing off, reduced the fills, changed the kick and snare pattern and reduced the complexity. Now I've got the pattern I want. Now I want to save this into the loop library. I just, look, there's the pattern, right? I just, it's eight bars long. I, I could shorten it if I want, but it's eight bars long at the moment. So I just drag it into the loop library and a red, I mean, a, a green plus appears under the mouse, let go. And I can now call it whatever I want, like Benny 
um, sparse beat, right? Now, sadly, I can't choose a category here called drummer, so uh, where all the other drummer uh, patterns live, uh, loops. But it's it's a loop, right? It's Benny. I've decided to call it Benny Sparse Beat. I'm not going to give it a category. I'll give it all drums, kits, whatever. It doesn't really make any difference. Um, and create. And it's creating a copy of that pattern that I've tweaked in the library. And there it is, at the pre-selected in the library. Now it's been created. Where is it? Uh, there. Benny Sparse Beat. Sorry, Sorry it wasn't pre-selected. But there it is. Benny Sparse Beat. Now, the, the loop library is switched to show all genres. So in other words, every single loop is, is, is now being displayed. There is my newly created drummer loop, which if I drag it onto a drummer track, it will switch that drummer to Benny and play that pattern. And I can then further tweak it if I want. But the problem is, it appears here in un when you show loops by all genres, in other words, every single loop in every type of genre, or if you switch to the new special category of drummer, it isn't there. That's the problem. It doesn't appear, so this must be a bug. Because if we go to Benny's patterns, it's simply not listed in this category, even though it clearly is a, a drummer loop in the library. But it just doesn't appear here, which, which is ridiculous. It must be a bug. Here's Benny's patterns. No, not Benny, Bridge, Bridge, Benny, Benny, Benny. There is no pattern. The one I just created does not show up if you switch to show only drummer loops. It's ridiculous. But it is there if you look at all genres or you go to my loops. There it is, Benny, Sparse Beat. So that must be a bug. But you can tweak and create your own drummer patterns, drag them over here and drop them into the library. It creates um, a library copy for you, which can be dragged in and used any time, auditioned any time, etc., etc. So we got all that, right? Um, multiple drummers, as we already know. The new percussionist, the new flat look. Smart controls, they have not changed. They seem exactly the same. Piano edit, piano edit hasn't changed. That's the same. The only difference with the drummer editor is we no longer select drummers here. We select them in the library. Um, and this new flat look. Another place you see the new flat look is if you... Oh, and the, the new quick help button, assuming it's new. If you, we get the new flat look also when we go to install the new track, new flat look icons. Also, we get the new flat look if we go to choose a template to start a new project. This has got a new flat look as well, right? So there you go. That's that's the real relevant stuff, right? Um, there are some other updates, uh, but they're not relevant to me. There's the iOS um, compatibility thing. They've got some update where I, I, I didn't really pay much attention to it because I don't use any iOS devices. I'm an Android man. Um, but I believe you can make tracks on your iOS version of GarageBand and they can be imported into into Logic, um, into GarageBand, this 10.2 version, or dragged and dropped into... I don't know how it works. You better look that up. And there's another update, uh, part of this update, this 10.2 update, that takes advantage of that sort of finger-swiping scroll bar along the top of the new MacBook Pros. But who the hell bought one of those? You know, um, not many people I know. Um, so and that's not relevant to me anyway. But check them out if they're relevant to you. But that's the the big meat and potato stuff. The new percussionists, the new loops, the new drummer loops living in the library, um, new Latin percussionists, new flatter look, border edges on regions. Um, when you drag, you see ghost content uh, from which you're making a selection for all types of regions drummer, audio, or MIDI, um, and the new flat look to menus and things like that. Yeah. Multiple drummer tracks now. That's absolutely brilliant. Uh, there you go. Hope that's useful. And uh, But the thing for me that's exciting is that these new um, percussionist drummers, they're not in Logic, so we must be due a Logic update soon, which will add these um, percussionist drummers. Uh, we must, because they can't have them in GarageBand but not in Logic. So expect a Logic update very soon, I would say. Um, I hope that's useful, and I'll see you for the next one.